Nagarjuna c. 150 c. 250 CE is widely considered one of the most important Buddhist philosophers. Along with his disciple Aryadeva, he is considered to be the founder of the Madhyamaka school of Mahayana Buddhism. Nagarjuna is also credited with developing the philosophy of the Prajnaparamita Sutras and, in some sources, with having revealed these scriptures in the world, having recovered them from the Nagas water spirits often depicted in the form of serpent-like humans. Furthermore, he is traditionally supposed to have written several treatises on Rasayana as well as serving a term as the head of Nalanda. History Very little is reliably known of the life of Nagarjuna, since the surviving accounts were written in Chinese and Tibetan centuries after his death. According to some accounts, Nagarjuna was originally from South India. Some scholars believe that Nagarjuna was an advisor to a king of the Satavahana dynasty. Archaeological evidence at Amaravati indicates that if this is true, the king may have been Yajna Sri Satakarni, who ruled between 167 and 196 CE. On the basis of this association, Nagarjuna is conventionally placed at around 150 to 250 CE. According to a 4th 5th century biography translated by Kumarajiva, Nagarjuna was born into a Brahmin family in Vidarbha, a region of Maharashtra, and later became a Buddhist. Some sources claim that in his later years, Nagarjuna lived on the mountain of Sriparvata near the city that would later be called Nagarjunakonda, Hill of Nagarjuna. The ruins of Nagarjunakonda are located in Gunter district, Andhra Pradesh. The Kadika and Bausrutiya Nikayas are known to have had monasteries in Nagarjunakonda. The archaeological finds at Nagarjunakonda have not resulted in any evidence that the site was associated with Nagarjuna. The name, Nagarjunakonda, dates from the medieval period, and the 3rd-4th century inscriptions found at the site make it clear that it was known as Vijayapuri in the ancient period. Topic. Writings There exist a number of influential texts attributed to Nagarjuna though, as there are many pseudepigrapha attributed to him, lively controversy exists over which are his authentic works. Mulamadhyamakakarika The Mulamadhyamakakarika is Nagarjuna's best known work. It is not only a grand commentary on the Buddha's discourse to Kakayana, the only discourse cited by name, but also a detailed and careful analysis of most of the important discourses included in the Nikayas and the Agamas, especially those of the Atthakavaga of the Sutta Nipata. Utilizing the Buddha's theory of dependent arising, Pratitya Samyupada, Nagarjuna demonstrated the futility of metaphysical speculations. His method of dealing with such metaphysics is referred to as middle way, Madhyama Pratipad. It is the middle way that avoided the substantialism of the Sarvastivadins as well as the nominalism of the Satrantikas. In the Mulamadhyamakakarika, a ll experienced phenomena are empty. Sunya. This did not mean that they are not experienced and, therefore, non existent, only that they are devoid of a permanent and eternal substance svabhava, because, like a dream, they are mere projections of human consciousness. Since these imaginary fictions are experienced, they are not mere names Prajnapti. Other attributed works According to one view, that of Christian Lintner, the works definitely written by Nagarjuna are Mulamadhyamaka Karika Fundamental Verses of the Middle Way Sanyadasaptati 70 Verses on Emptiness Vigrahavyavartani the end of disputes Vedalyaprakarana pulverizing the categories Vyavaharasiddhi proof of convention Yuktasastika 60 verses on reasoning Katastava hymn to the absolute reality Ratnavali precious garland Pratityasamupadardayakarika constituents of dependent arising Sutrasamukhaya Bodhikatavivarana exposition of the enlightened mind Sirleka, letter to a good friend. Bodhisambara, requisites of enlightenment. Bustin considers the first six to be the main treatises of Nagarjuna, while according to Taranatha, only the first five are the works of Nagarjuna. 
T. R. V. Murti considers Ratnavali, Pratitya Samyutpada Ridaya, and Sutra Samukhaya to be works of Nagarjuna, as the first two are quoted profusely by Chandrakirti and the third by Shantideva. In addition to works mentioned above, several others are attributed to Nagarjuna. There is an ongoing, lively controversy over which of those works are authentic. Contemporary research suggests that these works belong to a significantly later period, either to late 8th or early 9th century CE, and hence can not be authentic works of Nagarjuna. However, several works considered important in esoteric Buddhism are attributed to Nagarjuna and his disciples by traditional historians, like Taranatha from 17th century Tibet. These historians try to account for chronological difficulties with various theories. For example, a propagation of later writings via mystical revelation. For a useful summary of this tradition, see Wedemeyer 2007. Lintner considers that the Mahaprajñaparamitaupadisa commentary on the great perfection of wisdom is not a genuine work of Nagarjuna. This work is only attested in a Chinese translation by Kumarajiva. There is much discussion as to whether this is a work of Nagarjuna, or someone else. Etienne Lamotte, who translated one third of the work into French, felt that it was the work of a North Indian bhikkhu of the Sarvastivada school who later became a convert to the Mahayana. The Chinese scholar monk Yin Shun felt that it was the work of a South Indian and that Nagarjuna was quite possibly the author. These two views are not necessarily in opposition and a South Indian Nagarjuna could well have studied the northern Sarvastivada. Neither of the two felt that it was composed by Kumarajiva, which others have suggested. Philosophy From studying his writings, it is clear that Nagarjuna was conversant with many of the Sravaka philosophies and with the Mahayana tradition. However, determining Nagarjuna's affiliation with a specific Nikaya is difficult, considering much of this material has been lost. If the most commonly accepted attribution of texts that of Christian Lintner holds, then he was clearly a Mahayanist, but his philosophy holds assiduously to the Sravaka Tripitaka, and while he does make explicit references to Mahayana texts, he is always careful to stay within the parameters set out by the Sravaka canon. Nagarjuna may have arrived at his positions from a desire to achieve a consistent exegesis of the Buddha's doctrine as recorded in the Agamas. In the eyes of Nagarjuna, the Buddha was not merely a forerunner, but the very founder of the Madhyamaka system. David Kalupahana sees Nagarjuna as a successor to Nagaliputta Tissa in being a champion of the Middle Way and a reviver of the original philosophical ideals of the Buddha. Nagarjuna assumes a knowledge of the definitions of the sixteen categories as given in the Nyaya Sutras, the chief text of the Hindu Nyaya school, and wrote a treatise on the Pramanas where he reduced the syllogism of five members into one of three. In the Vigrahavyavartani Karika, Nagarjuna criticizes the Nyaya theory of pramanas means of knowledge Nagarjuna was fully acquainted with the classical Hindu philosophies of Samkhya and even the Vaisashika, because of the high degree of similarity between Nagarjuna's philosophy and Pyrrhonism, particularly the surviving works of Sextus Empiricus Thomas McEvely suspects that Nagarjuna was influenced by Greek Pyrrhonists' texts imported into India. Pyrrho of Elis c. 360 c. 270 BCE, who is usually credited with founding this school of skeptical philosophy, was himself influenced by Indian philosophy, when he travelled to India with Alexander the Great's army and studied with the gymnosophists. Sunyata <inaudible> <inaudible> Nagarjuna's major thematic focus is the concept of sunyata, translated into English as emptiness, which brings together other key Buddhist doctrines, particularly anatman, not self, and pratityasamutpada, dependent origination, to refute the metaphysics of some of his contemporaries. For Nagarjuna, as for the Buddha in the early texts, it is not merely sentient beings that are selfless. Or non substantial, all phenomena dhammas are without any svabhava, literally, own being, self nature, or inherent existence, and thus without any underlying essence. They are empty of being independently existent, thus, the heterodox theories of svabhava circulating at the time were refuted on the basis of the doctrines of early Buddhism. 
This is so because all things arise always dependently, not by their own power, but by depending on conditions leading to their coming into existence, as opposed to being. Nagarjuna means by real any entity which has a nature of its own svabhava, which is not produced by causes akartaka, which is not dependent on anything else Paratra Nirapeksha, chapter 24 verse 14 of the Mulamadhyamakakarika provides one of Nagarjuna's most famous quotations on emptiness and co-arising Sarvam ca yujit tesa sanyata yasya yujit sarvam na yujit tesa sunyam yasya na yujit all is possible when emptiness is possible, nothing is possible when emptiness is impossible. As part of his analysis of the emptiness of phenomena in the Mulamadhyamakakarika, Nagarjuna critiques svabhava in several different concepts. He discusses the problems of positing any sort of inherent essence to causation, movement, change and personal identity. Nagarjuna makes use of the Indian logical tool of the tetralemma to attack any essentialist conceptions. Nagarjuna's logical analysis is based on four basic propositions. All things dharma exist, affirmation of being, negation of non-being. All things dharma do not exist, affirmation of non-being, negation of being. All things dharma both exist and do not exist, both affirmation and negation. All things dharma neither exist nor do not exist, neither affirmation nor negation to say that all things are empty is to deny any kind of ontological foundation, therefore Nagarjuna's view is often seen as a kind of ontological anti-foundationalism or a metaphysical anti-realism. Understanding the nature of the emptiness of phenomena is simply a means to an end, which is nirvana. Thus Nagarjuna's philosophical project is ultimately a soteriological one meant to correct our everyday cognitive processes which mistakenly posits svabhava on the flow of experience. Some scholars such as Fyodor Shcherbatskoy and T.R.V. Murti held that Nagarjuna was the inventor of the Shunyata doctrine, however, more recent work by scholars such as Chung Moon Keat, Yin Shun and Dhammajati Thero has argued that Nagarjuna was not an innovator by putting forth this theory, but that, in the words of Shi Huafeng, the connection between emptiness and dependent origination is not an innovation or creation of Nagarjuna. Two truths. Nagarjuna was also instrumental in the development of the Two Truths Doctrine, which claims that there are two levels of truth in Buddhist teaching, the ultimate truth and the conventional or superficial truth The ultimate truth to Nagarjuna is the truth that everything is empty of essence, this includes emptiness itself the emptiness of emptiness. While some Murti, 1955, have interpreted this by positing Nagarjuna as a Neo-Kantian and thus making ultimate truth a metaphysical noumenon or an ineffable ultimate that transcends the capacities of discursive reason." Others such as Mark Sideri and J. L. Garfield have argued that Nagarjuna's view is that, "...the ultimate truth is that there is no ultimate truth," Sideri, and that Nagarjuna is a "...semantic anti-dualist," who posits that there are only conventional truths. Hence according to Garfield, Suppose that we take a conventional entity, such as a table. We analyze it to demonstrate its emptiness, finding that there is no table apart from its parts. So we conclude that it is empty. But now let us analyze that emptiness. What do we find? Nothing at all but the table's lack of inherent existence. Opening square bracket dot 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 closing square bracket dot. To see the table as empty, is to see the table as conventional, as dependent. In articulating this notion in the Mulamadhyamakakarika, Nagarjuna drew on an early source in the Kakanagata Sutta, which distinguishes definitive meaning from interpretable meaning By and large, Kakayana, this world is supported by a polarity, that of existence and non-existence. But when one reads the origination of the world as it actually is with right discernment, non-existence, with reference to the world does not occur to one. When one reads the cessation of the world as it actually is with right discernment, existence, with reference to the world does not occur to one. By and large, Kakayana, this world is in bondage to attachments, clingings, sustenances, and biases. But one such as this does not get involved with or cling to these attachments, clingings, fixations of awareness, biases, or obsessions, nor is he resolved on myself. He has no uncertainty or doubt that just stress, when arising, is arising, stress, when passing away, is passing away. In this, his knowledge is independent of others. 
It's to this extent, Kakayana, that there is right view. Everything exists. That is one extreme. Everything doesn't exist. That is a second extreme. Avoiding these two extremes, the Tathagata teaches the Dhamma via the middle. The version linked to is the one found in the Nikayas, and is slightly different from the one found in the Samyuktagama. Both contain the concept of teaching via the middle between the extremes of existence and non-existence. Nagarjuna does not make reference to everything when he quotes the Agamic text in his Mulamadhyamakakarika. Topic. Causality J. L. Garfield describes that Nagarjuna approached causality from the Four Noble Truths and Dependent Origination. Nagarjuna distinguished two dependent origination views in a causal process, that which causes effects and that which causes conditions. This is predicated in the two-truth doctrine, as conventional truth and ultimate truth held together, in which both are empty in existence. The distinction between effects and conditions is controversial. In Nagarjuna's approach, cause means an event or state that has power to bring an effect. Conditions, refer to proliferating causes that bring a further event, state or process, without a metaphysical commitment to an occult connection between explaining and explainants. He argues non-existent causes and various existing conditions. The argument draws from unreal causal power. Things conventional exist and are ultimately non-existent to rest in the middle way in both causal existence and non-existence as casual emptiness within the Mulamadhyamakakarika doctrine. Although seeming strange to Westerners, this is seen as an attack on a reified view of causality. <inaudible> Relativity Nagarjuna also taught the idea of relativity. In the Ratnavali, he gives the example that shortness exists only in relation to the idea of length. The determination of a thing or object is only possible in relation to other things or objects, especially by way of contrast. He held that the relationship between the ideas of short and long is not due to intrinsic nature svabhava. This idea is also found in the Pali Nikayas and Chinese Agamas, in which the idea of relativity is expressed similarly, that which is the element of light is seen to exist on account of in relation to darkness, that which is the element of good is seen to exist on account of bad, that which is the element of space is seen to exist on account of form. Iconography Nagarjuna is often depicted in composite form comprising human and Naga characteristics. Often the Naga aspect forms a canopy crowning and shielding his human head. The notion of the Naga is found throughout Indian religious culture, and typically signifies an intelligent serpent or dragon, who is responsible for the rains, lakes and other bodies of water. In Buddhism, it is a synonym for a realized arhat, or wise person in general. See also Acharya Nagarjuna University Nagarjuna High School Aryadeva Buddhapalita Buddhism Kamalasila Middle Way Santaraksita Sun Simiao Sunyata Yogacara Madhyamaka <laughs>